Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we're going to be painting part 8 of the Fellowship of the Ring and in this video we're going to be painting Mary so here's little Mary and all primed and ready to go and we're going to start straight away as always by painting the skin there's a few things on this that I'm going to be painting that are quite similar to what we've already painted in the past so if you've painted a few of the videos with me uh, you should be experts on some of these parts by now like painting the skin or or paint in the non-metallics on the sword and things like that but without further ado we're going to get straight to it so i'm just going to base coat all of the skin colors not forgetting his little hobbit feet and then we're going to go straight in and try to paint some of the harder to reach areas first so i'm starting with one of my favorite yellows in avalanche sunset and we're just going to paint his little waistcoat this yellow color and we'll build this color up a little bit later from there, we're also going to start by putting a yellowish brown color across the hair. So we're starting with a brown sand color. And this is a good base color for things like uh, blonde kind of colors or a sandy kind of hair color. Um, and that's because this is going to give us a little bit of a two-tone rather than it being brown or it being too yellow for the blonde and things like that. This is going to be a little bit of a toned down color, which is great. We're then going to paint his jacket using a military green from Vallejo. This is a great colour as well because this colour will dry down into a really nice matte effect. It's also quite a dark colour to begin with which is perfect for allowing us to build those colours and those tones and vibrancy back up a little bit later. I'm going to try to be as careful as possible around the hands and things here and around that little waistcoat as well. Just trying to get into as many of the creases as possible uh, without overdoing or without colouring over the top of the waistcoat. Uh, but as I normally say it doesn't matter too much when we base coat him because we can fix any mistakes that we make a little bit later on anyway so just trying to paint both sides of the coat now I'm going to use something completely different so I'm going to use a, uh, a new paint for the channel and this is one of my scale 75s uh, paints so I picked up a couple of different scale 75 paint sets and this one is a dark dark gray color so this is called a necro gray and this is a really dark gray color but it does have a light blue tinge to it so it does have a very 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 slight blue tone to it um, not that you can notice it when it's painted like this but as we build it up a little bit later it will give off a very very slight blue tone and that's perfect because that's kind of what we want this cloak to do so I'm going to paint the cloak over in this color now if you didn't want to use this and you've already got a, a colors that we've used previously you could use the same dark blue gray that I used for Gandalf's cloak instead uh, but I just wanted to introduce a few new colors and try something a little bit different as well while we're going so going back to a firm favorite color of mine we're going back to the dark rust brown and I'm just gonna paint this across his little trousers and just across the um, the small sort of um, bag strap and the bag itself on the back of the cloak here and this is a great base color because this is a really nice dark brown color that we can build tones and colors up from later. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I love using this color because you can get a lot of different colors and techniques uh, from this really, really dark tone. Now, if you're not much of a Vallejo user and you use Games Workshop instead, you could just use a Dryad Bark. They're practically the same color. They do very, very similar things. From there, I'm just going to add a small amount of stonewall grey, and this is just a nice mid-tone grey, just on the rock that's in his hand here. And we're not going to do too much with the rock, I don't think there's a lot that needs to be done to this. And then I'm also going to go to one of my favourite colours as well, the Tenebrous Grey from AK Interactive. And again, as I normally say, you could use black instead if you like, if you are a fan of using some of the Vallejo blacks or uh, whichever colour suits you best. The Tenebrous Grey, I particularly like purely just because of the coverage on the model. It moves really, really quickly and easily and it dries down to a really good base colour. Now, once all of those colors are dry, we are going to apply a nice shade of Agrax Earthshade. Now, I know that uh, Games Workshop recently changed the um, uh, the shades and the washes to be a little bit more like um, the contrast paints. So I'm still using the old shades at the moment. I don't have any of the new ones yet. Um, so by using this Agrax Earthshade, this is the older version. Um, from what I can gather, the new ones aren't massively different um, just different in sort of the way you apply them uh, but if you prefer using sort of another or a different brand's brown color then you can do you could use things like the um, strong tone from the army painter um, you know things like that 
And once that's dry, we should have darker areas in all of the recess points, and then we're just going to build those skin tones back up. So we're going straight away back into using the base coat that we used for the skin originally, and just using this beige red, we're just going to build up all of the tones around the face, so the cheeks, the nose, the forehead, the chin, and of course we're going to do the same thing around the feet and the hands as well. So we're just building the colour up, but without going into the areas where the shade is pooled, so in the eyes, around the mouth, in between the cracks of the fingers and things like that. So this is how we're going to build the depth and build the amount of tone and, and detail that we get out of the miniature. Um, it's quite a, 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 not so much a simple process, but once you start getting used to doing this and you do it often enough and you paint a lot of different skin, uh, you do get used to doing this quite quickly um, and it does become almost second nature. It's just trying to be as careful as possible, not to cover too many of the toes like I did there. So then we're going to use basic skin tone and beige red. So again, this is a combination that I use quite often on the on the channel. And this is just mixing them uh, completely 50% of each paint. So half of each paint go in directly into the mix with a little bit of water. And then that's all we're going to do. We're going to be a little bit more careful as to where we place this. So this is more where the light will catch. A little bit more on the nose, the cheekbones, around the forehead, and across the knuckles and things like that. So this one is just being a little bit more... Um, a little bit more direct to where we want the light to be seen um, and where we want it to be a little bit little bit brighter on the model um, so yeah this is just taking our time as you can see just down the hand here just across the knuckles and the fingers and then it's up to you if you want to push the color any further if you wanted to you could always highlight this just by using only the basic skin tone uh, but for certain models you don't need to keep pushing and going too extreme or too far it depends just on how much you want the model to stand out how much depth you want in the skin and all things like that so for me i'm gonna leave this one as is and then i'm just gonna do a very 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 light brush so we're gonna go for a very very small controlled dry brush we're gonna start off with the brown sand so that's the original color that we used on his hair and we're just gonna pick up the details of the hair by being very very controlled and very very um, like I say a lot more careful once that's done we're gonna use a gold brown so sticking again with this brown sort of motif but this gold brown now has a really cool really nice tint of yellow to it and this is where we're gonna get that sort of uh, blondish color that sort of um, will stand out on his hair and make him look a little bit more blonde than normal and then we're gonna go back to that yellow that Avalon sunset and we're just gonna get our very very fine detail brush and we're gonna pick out all of those uh, creases and folds in the waistcoat just like so so we're gonna be as careful as possible now like we did with the face not to put this paint in to the recessed areas where the wash and the shade has dried and instead just picking out on the raised areas on those edges so as you can see really really picking out the detail of those folds and that's going to build up the character and build up the uh, the details so it's going to really make our model stand out then once that's dry we're going back to the military green that we use for his waistcoat and then we're just going to paint that again doing the same sort of thing so we're going to paint the overall areas where you can see the the, the main blocks of color but we're going to leave the the shade and that darker point just sitting in the creases and as you can see i'm just painting up on all of those folds across the coat here and across the sleeves just kind of build in that detail and build in that tone up nice and easily now as normal i would suggest making sure that you thin your paints down uh, with one or two little drops of water or your flow improver depending on which you prefer to use because these will take to the miniature a lot better it will allow you to smoothly blend the colors together and the colors will gradually um, improve and increase on their vibrance it won't just be a splodge of of paint that looks too out of place or anything like that and again it's something that takes a little bit of practice but with a little bit of time and patience you can pick this up pretty pretty easy so we're going to use the military green and a small amount of medium olive and the reason why i say a small amount is because with the medium olive and the military green it's always worth adding a small amount of the medium olive first um, so i would say maybe sort of like about 25 percent so that would be uh, roughly sort of one drop to four so that's one drop of medium olive to four drops of military green and the reason why I put a small amount in is because this color does start to tone things up and again as you can see it's nice and thin so that I'm using it more like a um, 
uh, I'm using this more like a glaze so that I'm building this up in layers rather than one big splodge of color as I said earlier uh, but also by using it in small increments so using it a small amount at a time this allows you to build the layers and build the vibrancy as you go because quite often you don't find or, or you won't want the the exact highlight straight away you kind of want to build through those highlights um, so again as I said with the skin you could push that further if you wanted to and go further and further with the olive green uh, but for me I'm happy with the way that the waistcoat looks now just for the little bit inside uh, I'm just going to uh, use a pastel yellow from the AK Interactive just to paint the buttons quickly just to get a little bit more detail and to, to make them stand out and pop a little bit on the miniature just so that it breaks up all of that yellow and then we're going to go back onto the uh, the cloak and using the cloak we're going to go back onto that scale 75 paint that new paint that i've used and we're just going to build up the original color first so we're just using the necro gray first and as you can see there is a little hint of blue already in the cloak uh, as we sort of build this up we're going to pick out a little bit more of that blue as we go so just being as careful as possible to pick out the folds as best as we can and again just leave in the shade laying in all of those recess points and in all of those little folds and in all of those little creases and that's probably the easiest way to build up the uh, the depth uh, you know i keep talking about building the vibrancy building the depth up and things like that but pretty much it's just by using the base the shade then building the base and then building up a highlight so using two slightly different uh, paints here, so we go in with the Necro Grey, and we've got this Miskatonic Grey as well. And I'm just showing you what I mean by using a very small amount here. As you can see, I'm just putting a very tiny drop into the palette, so that that kind of creates a slight highlight, but without changing the paint too much. Because by adding too much highlights into darker colours, you can kind of change them. And we don't want this to become a dark blue, we want this to still contain and still look like a grey colour, maybe with a slight hint of blue. Uh, so just by putting small increments in at a time, this gives you more control and more ability to be able to pick and choose how vibrant and how much of a highlight you want to get out of the colour. If you go too extreme straight away, uh, the jump in colour will be so, so much that it might stand off on your miniature too much. And then you'll think, oh, the uh, the, the, the jump is too much and, and the vibrancy has been like way overdone. So as you can see, I'm adding another small drop of that Miskatonic Grey. And then I'm adding more water into this again, just creating more of a glaze. Because with a glaze, it's so thin, we can use multiple layers to build our vibrancy. You see how thin that's coming off the brush now, which is perfect because we want this to be nice and thin. And so we're gonna go back again using this next layer, this next stage of, of highlight. And as you can see, this is really, really thin going onto the model now as well, which is allowing us, again, as I said, to build our vibrancy up. And the cool thing with using a glaze is you can use multiple layers of the same color. So we can place this on once, and then we can go back and just pick a little bit more again and build that vibrancy through because this is going to dry down very very thin giving us the ability and the control that we need uh, where we want that highlight to be and again as I say you could push this as many times as you like you can really sort of go for it and and, and build up that vibrance as much as you like but I wanted to keep this in a nice sort of grayish cloak so I'm not going to go any further than that and now we're just going to move back on to doing the trousers with the dark rust and this time I'm just gonna pick out all of those creases. And with the trousers on this particular character, you can really see uh, the flow of the miniature and the, the, the dynamic pose of the miniature. So you can kind of pick out those, those creases and those folds much, much easier on this one. It's very, very straightforward and very easy to do as you can see. So I'm just trying to be careful not to get this into those uh, little creases um, where the shade is resting. And then we're going to do the same thing as what we've done with the cloak and things like that. And we're going to use this, uh, the dark rust and we're going to add a small amount of leather brown to this. And again, this is something that we can just build up as we go. So try it with a small increment at first. And if you need to build it further, then you can build it further as you go. And this is just going to slightly change that overall color. As you can see, it's just going to have a slightly brighter tone to it. And this time I'm being more careful about where I place it. So just the same as we did with the coat, just the same as we did with the cloak, we just being very very picky as to where we want the light to be on those trousers 
from there I'm using uh, going to an AK Interactive Leather Brown and if you followed the channel and you've seen me paint any of the others you'll know that this is a really really great recipe for leather so this leather brown is going to go on top of that dark rust that we use for the bag and this is going to be the starting blocks of building these leathers up and building the vibrancy to the bag uh, that he's got just hanging over his back so you're just going to carefully use a few little sort of dabbing motions and some very, very specific sort of scratches and things like that because we want leathers and pouches and things like that to look a little bit worn and a little bit beaten up. And then we're going to mix in a small amount of the deep brown. This one now I would do about half and half. So this is half the deep brown, half the leather brown. As you can see, the normal leather brown has dried down. And then being a little bit more specific with these little dabbing motions and, uh, and these sort of scratchy motions and scratchy effects, how much this is going to make it look like a really worn out bag and a really sort of worn out rucksack that they've carried for, uh, you know, a long, long, long journey. And we're going to do the same thing, just being very very specific just down the little band going down his arm and once that's done we're going to move on to the deep brown on its own so this is now the highlight layer so we don't want to go too extreme but again you're just going to pick out some of the really really extreme points that we want just using some of that that dabbing motion and the scratchy motion um, again it's something that takes just a little bit of practice but sometimes when you're painting things like worn out leather leaving some of the colors underneath having some of the scratches scrapes and and, and bits that are beaten up and worn they make these things look really really cool so from there we're going to move on to the metals um, with this character there's not really a great amount of metal other than just the sword so we're going to build this up firstly with an anthracite gray which is a really 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 subtle blue gray and this is going to create that sort of steel color that kind of steel effect and we're going to paint this straight on top of the black that we've put down first of all from there we're going to use a very dark gray in the ash gray and we're thinning these paints down really 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 thin um, some of the other uh, painting tutorials that i've done in the fellowship um, uh, in the fellowship of the ring sets will show you and talk you through how to do this a lot lot more in depth than what i'm going to do here probably the best one for that would be at boromir because i've spent quite a lot of time sort of explaining and breaking it down on the sword and the shield uh, but you can kind of see how quickly and easily I'm getting the effect here. So we're going to move on to a slightly lighter colour then with the graphite. And again, we're just picking out where the light is going to be. Just using very, very thin amount on the sword, as you can see. And I'm controlling kind of where I'm allowing the highlights to be. So just across the one edge, across the top, and then towards the hilt underneath. And then the silver grey. Now the silver grey, as I said in the previous video when I painted Gimli, is the colour that really makes this, um, this sort of non-metallic colour or this non-metallic effect really pop. Because this has a bright effect, but it's not too bright as to be the highlighting colour. It's a kind of in-between, and it really, really does set the effect off quite nicely so again as you can see i'm trying to be very careful where i place this so towards the hilt down the bottom and then just towards the tip of the sword across the top and again with these paints being nice and thin these are going to dry down quite nicely and have sort of a a sort of rough and, and ground down sort of a worn out sword effect now i'm also then going to move on to using the off-white color and with the off-white color, we're going to start to get really, really, really specific. So as you can see, I'm just about using the very, very, very tip of the brush, the very edge of the brush here, just to kind of build those little scratches and scrapes and the direct color, uh, sort of the, the, the direct um, area of uh, the edges of the sword where the light will be catching and things like that. As you can see, just trying to be as careful as possible and just trying to use this to pick out those edges and then just add in a little scrape or two just along the blade as well just so that the blade looks again just a little bit worn and a little bit beaten just so that it looks like it's had a little bit of use um, and then finally just using a very very vibrant white color and again just going and picking out the very extreme edges so we just edge highlight in the sword as much as possible just like so and so that is kind of like your non-metallic metal in a very very quick effect as i said if you want to learn how to do it a little bit more i've done it a lot more with gimli and a lot more with boromir both of those i've really really broke down how i built the effect and there you have mary mary is now a part of my 
uh, Fellowship of the Ring display, he is part 8. I'm really happy with the way that he's come out. It's great to see different colours on all of my Hobbits because now they're all standing out and they all have their own individual characters. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and I really hope that I've been able to uh, show you something different with one or two of the new paints as well, but also keeping it quite familiar and quite the same. Um, so yeah, all in all, I'm really happy with how he's come out and there's only one more left to do and that is Aragorn. So I really hope that you guys stick around to see part 9 and the final which will be Aragorn and hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to bring him together soon. As always my friends, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching, thank you for the comments, thank you for the positivity that you bring to the channel um, and of course for the support. As always, I will see you guys on the next one.